Today, we count down the 10 greatest wins in LA Kings history on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 18 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Before we get into today's show, uh, we do have a little bit of news to pass along. Today, the LA Kings signed their second-round draft pick from this past year's draft. That is goaltender Carter George. He gets a three-year entry-level deal worth $875,000 per season. He was the 57th overall pick in this year's draft. The 18-year-old has played only one full season of junior hockey for the Owen Sound Attack, uh, but also played for the Canadian World Junior Team and is an exciting prospect for the Kings in net. That said, he is several years away from being considered uh, for the NHL. He'll be back in juniors next season, maybe a couple more seasons. Uh, Eventually, when he turns pro, he'll probably have a couple of seasons in the AHL. Uh, Goaltenders do take a little bit longer to mature, but again, good to have Carter Hart under contract and officially a member of the LA Kings family. We look forward to seeing how his future develops. So I don't think I've ever revealed this on the show, but I'm a big fan of history. Um, I was an okay student, terrible at math, but my favorite subject has always been history. Now, I'm not calling myself a historian or even a king historian, uh, but I do love good stories. I love learning about the past, and I love visiting historical locations. And I especially enjoy when my favorite things collide, like history and sports. So with that in mind, I thought it might be fun to count down the 10 greatest wins in LA Kings history. Obviously, this is my list, but I tried to take my personal feelings out of it as much as I could and give you what I think are the list of the greatest 10 wins in LA Kings history. Uh, Now, we'll start with a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, October 14th, 1967 at the Long Beach Convention Center, The L.A. Kings beat the Philadelphia Flyers 4-2 for the team's first ever win in their first ever game in franchise history. April 4th, 1968 at the Forum, the Kings edged the Minnesota North Stars 2-1 to wrap up their first playoff series win in franchise history. Actually, correct myself, that was the first playoff win in the history of the franchise. Uh, April 6th, 1975, Oakland Alameda County Coliseum Arena The Kings tied the Oakland Seals 1-1 to close out their regular season, and that gave the LA Kings their franchise record 105th point on the season, a record which still stands today for most points in a single season. All right, so let's get into the top 10 greatest wins in LA Kings history. We'll start, obviously, with number 10. Count down to number one. You probably know what number one is, but we'll see. Uh, April 13th, 1969. Again, the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum Arena. NHL semifinals, the Kings beat the Oakland Seals 5-3 to win their first playoff series in franchise history. That was in their second year of existence. Ted Urban scored a pair of goals, and Lowell McDonald uh, gets the game-winning goal. The Kings, unfortunately, though, wouldn't win another playoff series for 14 years, which is kind of a trend for the LA Kings. They, uh, they'll do something amazing, and then they'll kind of have a lull for a while. Uh, let's get to number nine. Uh, April 23rd, 2001, Staples Center, Game 6, Western Conference Finals. The LA Kings took on the powerful Detroit Red Wings in a series LA was not expected to win. Uh, Detroit had won the Central Division that season. They had posted 111 points, tied for the second most in the NHL. Now, the Wings would go on to win the Stanley Cup the following season, but this season, their season came to an unexpected end 
in Los Angeles. Now, the Kings were down 2-1 going into the third period. Uh, L.A., though, would tie it up on an Adam Deadmarsh goal. Then Deadmarsh would win it in sudden death overtime, setting off a huge celebration in a game that was dubbed the Frenzy on Figueroa. That playoff series win was the Kings' first in eight seasons. Unfortunately, they wouldn't win another playoff series for another 10 years. I was actually at Staples Center that night. It was the first playoff series win since the Kings went to the Stanley Cup final back when I became a Kings fan, or really a true Kings fan, back in 1993. And so this was the first chance for any of us to see them win a playoff series since they made it that Cinderella run to the Stanley Cup final. It was the first time I ever saw the Kings in person with my own eyes win a playoff series or win a game that clinched a playoff series. And I remember, again, it had been a while, uh, obviously, since the Kings had won a playoff series. And for a lot of people who really got sold on the Kings during that 93 Cup run, this was our first chance to see the Kings have some playoff success. So it was a big deal. Um, and then winning in overtime against a team that obviously they weren't supposed to beat. It was a raucous, it, I mean, at the time for me, it was certainly the loudest and the most excited I've ever seen Staples Center for a hockey game to that point. Uh, to number eight on the list of the top 10 Kings greatest wins, uh, April 2nd of 2012, Rogers Arena in Vancouver, game six of the Western Conference quarterfinals. The Kings stunned the President's Trophy winning Vancouver Canucks with a 2-1 overtime win to take the series four games to two and start their eventual first ever Stanley Cup title run. Uh, eventual Conn Smythe Trophy winning goalie Jonathan Quick would allow just one goal on 27 shots in the deciding game. And Jarrett Stoll was the overtime playoff hero, scoring in sudden death to clinch the win and the series. That win gave the Kings confidence that they needed, that they could beat any team they would face the rest of the way, that they likely weren't going to face a better team the rest of the playoffs than the Vancouver Canucks. So that set them on their way, and they would go all the way to win their first ever Stanley Cup. And number seven on the top 10 list, May 16th, 2014, Honda Center in Anaheim, Game 7, Western Conference Semifinals, the first and, to date, only playoff meeting between Southern California's two NHL teams as the Kings were taken on the Ducks. L.A. got off to a hot start in the first period in this one on goals from Justin Williams, Jeff Carter, and Mike Richards. L.A. then added the next two goals to take a commanding 5-0 lead thanks to Andre Kopitar and Marion Gabrick. L.A. would go on to cruise to a 6-2 win to advance to the Western Conference Final on their way to winning their second Stanley Cup in franchise history. Now, going into that series, the Kings and the Ducks had each won a Stanley Cup in their history, and the game would give that team's bragging rights over the other uh, to win that first ever playoff series. Now, the Ducks did win a cup before the Kings did, but the Kings have since gone on to win two Stanley Cups and bragging rights of having won that first and so far only playoff matchup head-to-head -head against the Anaheim Ducks. And I was also at this game, and one of the interesting things I remember about it, now you probably know as Kings fans that Kings fans do a pretty good job of going down to Anaheim and kind of taking over uh, the Honda Center. Um, it's never, you know, a case where the Kings have more fans than the Ducks fans, but usually it's, I don't know, maybe 70, 30. Um, and, you know, when you have Kings fans that do go on the road or any fans, frankly, that go on the road, it's usually the hardcore fans, kind of a more raucous group of fans. So they're usually louder. And uh, it kind of gives the feel that it's almost like a 50-50 split. It never is. But I do remember, certainly very rare for a playoff game to have that kind of a feel, almost like it was a college football bowl game where you had 50% fans, one on the other side. It wasn't that again, but I do. that's one of the things I definitely remember. Um, and I also remember at the end of the game, they go through the handshake line, and you would have thought there would have been a lot of Ducks fans who wanted to leave early because they didn't want to see the Kings celebrate a playoff win on their home ice. But it was Tamu Solani's final game of his Hall of Fame career, and the fans wanted to stay to send him off and give him a standing ovation at the end of the game, which is what they did. Um, the LA Kings, after the handshake line, stayed on the ice to give Solani the, the, the stick tap on the ice and salute him as well. Very classy move. Uh, certainly it was easy for the Kings to do because they had just won. They were in a good mood. 
Um, but I do, I definitely remember that it was an odd end to a playoff series where you had the entire arena giving a standing ovation to their team, but mostly for Tamu Solani because it was the final game of his NHL career. All right, up next, we're going to give you four, five, and six on the list of top 10 LA Kings greatest wins in franchise history. That's next on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day as somebody didn't silence their phone. Hey, I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop, but FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. Major League Baseball, golf, soccer, NASCAR, never too early to get some bets down on your favorite NFL teams as training camps are going on right now. And you know, yes, sports betting, not yet legal in California. Hopefully that'll change soon if you're a fan of that. Uh, but you can still get in on the fun at FanDuel. Browse the latest betting odds on your favorite sports teams and go to the Sportsbook app. And there you can get in on the action anywhere with their free games that feature real cash prizes. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. We continue our list of the top 10 greatest wins in Kings history. At number six, April 30th, 2014, SAP Center in San Jose. Game seven of the Western Conference quarterfinals. And after losing the first three games of their series against their Northern California rivals, the Sharks, the Kings would storm back to win three games in a row and force a deciding game seven in San Jose, leading 2-1 going into the third period. The Kings got goals from Tyler Toffoli and Dustin Brown, and then Tanner Pearson iced it with an empty net goal. The Kings win 5-1 to one to take the series and stage the last time a professional sports team in North America has rallied from down three games to nothing to win a playoff series. It was just the fourth time in NHL history that a team has done it, the fifth time in North American sports history that it's happened. It's never been done in the NBA uh, it was done once in baseball. The Boston Red Sox rallied to beat the New York Yankees when they were down three games to nothing. And again, the last time it has happened in sports, the LA Kings did it to the San Jose Sharks. And again, that was the start of the Kings going on to win their second Stanley Cup in franchise history. April 5th, this is number five, number five on the list of the top 10. Uh, April 10th, 1982, the Forum Game three, Smythe Division semifinals. We talked about this recently with Daryl Evans. The miracle on Manchester. The Kings down 5 nothing to Wayne Gretzky and the powerful Oilers. Evans in that season at 111 points, tied for second in the NHL that season. They won the regular season division title, the Smythe Division. Uh, LA was down 5 nothing going into the third period, but chipped away at the lead on goals from Jay Wells, Doug Smith, Charlie Simmer, Mark Hardy, and finally in the final moments, Steve Bozak to incredibly tie up the game at 5-5 and force sudden death. In overtime, Daryl Evans ended the game, the rookie, with a goal, and the Kings miraculously pull it out 6-5. L.A. would go on to win the series, but that game three by the L.A. Kings remains the biggest single-game comeback in Stanley Cup playoff history and for many many years that was the biggest win in king's franchise history but uh, there were a couple of wins a little bit later on that would surpass it uh this this next one number four is near and dear to my heart because this was during the season where i really became a king's fan a hardcore king's fan i had dabbled a little bit in watching the kings the only nhl california team at that time but this season, the season, the 92-93 season was the first time I really invested in the Kings from start to finish. And little did I know that they would take me on this amazing run all the way to the Stanley Cup final and make me a Kings fan for life. But May 29th, 1993, Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, game seven of the Western Conference Finals, the Cinderella LA Kings on the verge of of their first ever trip to the Stanley Cup final, but they would have to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs on the road to get there. Great story. If you've never heard it, Wayne Gretzky gets in the elevator at the team hotel to head over to the arena to get ready for the game. Security guard says to him, quote, big game tonight. 
it's going to be crazy around here around 1030, end quote. The great one, as he gets off the elevator, turns to the guard and says, quote, don't worry about it. My job starts at 730, end quote. Now, Gretzky definitely went to work on the Toronto Maple Leafs that night. He would open up the scoring to give the Kings a one nothing lead with a shorthanded goal. He would then give the Kings the lead in the second period, 3-2 with his second goal of the game, and then cap it off with a hat trick in what would be turn out to be the game-winning goal in the third period, and the Kings pull out a 5-4 victory. Wayne Gretzky called it the greatest game he has ever played. And uh, I remember watching it on television. I still probably couldn't grasp kind of the enormity of it because I was such a new fan. But just the intensity of playoff hockey that whole year and then capping it with the Game 7 victory on the road in a raucous Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, an amazing, amazing moment for the LA Kings. And uh, number four on our list of top 10 greatest wins in Kings history. We've got the top three coming up. We'll do that next year on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay is guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Well, we are going to wrap up our top 10 greatest wins in Kings history. We've got the uh, the top three coming up here in just a moment uh, as I am vamping for a second to get a prop ready uh but we will we'll start with number three uh june the first 2014 united center chicago game seven of the western conference finals and if you've watched or listened to this show i've said this is my personal favorite win in king's history i know that might sound crazy because this was not a win to clinch a stanley cup but to me this was in my mind the Stanley Cup final. It was the last two Stanley Cup winners going toe-to-toe, the LA Kings and the Chicago Blackhawks. The game seven speaks for itself, and then for it to be decided in overtime, it was the most stressful I've ever felt watching a sporting event. It was the most elation I've ever had watching a sporting event, and that's why, for me, this was my favorite all-time LA Kings win. Um, you know, there was no doubt to me that the winner of this game was going to win the Stanley Cup. So it went overtime, as you well know, before Alec Martinez had a shot deflect off a Blackhawks player, flutter past Chicago goalie Corey Crawford and into the net to give L.A. the 5-1 victory. Um, and uh, for the Kings, uh, obviously, uh, elation. Uh, and, you know, look, the year the year that they went and won their first Stanley Cup, they beat the Arizona Coyotes, Phoenix Coyotes for the conference championship and, and, you know, all along that road, you know, um, it, it was great because of so many different things, because it was such a, it was a first time and all these road wins that they were pulling off being an eight seed and going all the way. But this one, it, 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 this felt like a heavyweight title fight. It really did. And, uh, like I said, this is my favorite win in Kings history, but we have to wrap up the top two with, I think the pretty obvious top two, uh, number two, June 13th, 2014, Staples Center in Los Angeles, Stanley Cup final. The uh, LA Kings taking on the New York Rangers. The Kings would be up three games to one in the series, looking to close it out on home ice with their second title in three years. The game ends up going double overtime before Alec Martinez once again was the hero in sudden death. I do have the final call here. It's one of my, it's the text uh, message that I get on my ringtone. So let's, let's listen to it. I've done this before, but I always enjoy doing this. Uh, here is Nick Nixon on the call for the LA Kings double overtime win against the New York Rangers. 
Martinez to Clifford. Feeds it right side to Foley with a shot. See, rebound. Score! Alec Martinez has won the Stanley Cup for the Los Angeles Kings. And that's been my ringtone pretty much ever since. And I have never gotten tired of listening to that. Again, I was in attendance for that game. Um, it was obviously a special win. I've said, I've said for me personally, and again, maybe this is somewhat controversial. To me, the 2014 Stanley Cup run was more thrilling. And I don't know if more important is the right word. I enjoyed it more. I thought it was a more challenging run than 2012. The first time's always special. Obviously, it's going to be our number one on the list, but beating, you know, uh, the Sharks in seven and coming back down three, nothing beating the ducks in the first ever playoff series against Anaheim, beating the Blackhawks, the defending champs on the road in another game seven, and then capping it off with a double overtime win. I thought that 2014 cup run was amazing. And to me, it really validated the LA Kings. I think there was, you know, you can always say, Hey, uh, a, you know, a good team that makes the playoffs, get hot at the right time. Jonathan Quick was the hot goalie back in 2012. He put the team on his back. And I'm not saying it was a fluke. I don't think people believe any championship's a fluke, especially the Stanley Cup playoffs, because it's so hard to do. But I think there was probably, and maybe even amongst Kings fans, thought that, well, we got lucky at the right time. And it was an awesome run, um, Cinderella story and all that. But this wasn't that, right? The Kings had just won two years before. They had lost in the Western Conference Final the previous year. They're taking on the defending champs. They win another Game 7 on the road and then cap it off with a, a victory in the Stanley Cup Final. I just thought it was more impressive, even maybe a little bit more special in a way, because, again, I thought it really validated that first cup run for the Kings. This wasn't just a team that got hot at the right time, although there's always an aspect of that, I guess, for any team. But they were legit, I thought, after winning that cup in 2012 but for the number one greatest win in king's history you have to go with the first stanley cup championship june 11th of 2012 at staples center the kings dominate the new jersey devils in game six of the stanley cup final en route to a 6-1 victory to capture the first stanley cup title in franchise history and uh, this is the message i get when i get a text uh, this is again from nick nixon the final call of the first ever championship in LA Kings history. The long wait is over. After 45 years, the Kings can wear their crown. The Los Angeles Kings have won the Stanley Cup. Obviously, like I said, I when you compare the two years for me, I thought 2014 was more fun, more challenging. I love that it validated the Kings, but it still wasn't the first time. The first time is always incredibly special because you never know if it's going to happen. There's no guarantees in sports that every team eventually will win it. There's plenty of franchises out there in different sports that have still never won a Super Bowl or a World Series or a Stanley Cup final. Uh, the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians haven't won. Maybe they won one way back when, but I think they've gone, gosh, I think want to say like 70 something years. Um, the Cleveland Browns, uh, they've never won a Super Bowl. The Detroit Lions have never won a Super Bowl. Uh, if you look at hockey, the Buffalo Sabres, the Vancouver Canucks, they've been around as long as the Kings, uh, at least uh, for the most part. Uh, I don't know. If it was, uh, I think Buffalo and Vancouver were like the second wave of expansion franchises, but they were, they're all, they've been almost as round as long as the, uh, the Kings have, but like I said, there, there's no guarantee. I've mentioned this before. My wife is a huge Los Angeles, San Diego chargers fan. They've been to the super bowl once and they got blown out and they haven't been back since. So she, uh, she's keeping the fingers crossed that maybe one day she'll get to see it. But as Kings fans, we've not only seen it once, but twice, but the first time again, it was such a relief. I think for so many Kings fans to, to know that it was going to happen because let's be honest, you look at the Kings playoff history. Uh, it's not great. Uh, there were a lot of lean years where they didn't make the playoffs and even more years where they would get in, but be out in the first round. So, uh, winning that first ever Stanley cup, obviously it has to be the greatest win in LA Kings history. So there you have it. 
my top 10 greatest wins in Kings history. I assume no surprises. Um, and yes, they're all playoff games. Um, I, I'm, I can't honestly remember a regular season game that was so big that it would trump a historic playoff win. Maybe it exists. Maybe I've forgotten about it. Um, I don't think there's ever been a situation where the Kings won on the final day of the regular season and that got them into the playoffs. Um, that might be up for consideration, but I think it's pretty fair and understandable that every one of this, every win on this list is is a playoff list or playoff win because that's the biggest time of the year. That's the most fun time of year. It's the most memorable time of the year. Uh, those playoff victories. So, um, what did you think of the list? Uh, did you agree with where I had the games ranked? Was there some games that I uh, didn't have in there that should have been in there? Certainly my fandom, like I said, only goes back to 92, 93 and a few years before I dabbled in the Kings a little bit, but, but that's really where my history is. And I did try to do research on it and look at some of the series back in the old days to see if there was something that, that included. And I did include the first ever playoff series clinching win. Um, but if you're an old, old school Kings fan and you're like, oh, you got to include this game, uh, let me know. We've got a Friday fan, fan feedback show coming up where you can do exactly that if you would want. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked on LA Kings every day, coming up on Friday, it is our weekly fan feedback show. Anything you want to comment on that we talked about this week could be the Arthur Kaliab situation, my thumbs up, thumbs down on the LA Kings contracts, our interview with Kings anthem singer Hannah Davey, or today's list as well anything else that's on your mind doesn't have to be specifically about what we talked about this week it's your show uh we do it every friday if you want to get an email in for that the email address is locked on eddie at gmail.com you can always leave your comments in the uh, youtube episodes if you're watching on youtube we appreciate that and uh, we'd love for you to stay interactive with the show by following us on x twitter and instagram we are at locked on la kings That'll do it for today's show. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you on Friday. And as always, go Kings go.